You just tell me, Ned, when you're ready to start. Yeah, one more minute. I, I see uh, Dobie's joining us. It's the famous Rick Harris. I think this is the first time Rick and I have been on a Zoom together. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, why don't we uh, jump into this and let me give everybody a little bit of background. First, um, uh, much thanks, uh, many thanks to you, Chris, and to your students who were willing to come in to be part of this demonstration. And uh, a couple of, um, well, maybe a month ago, it was the first of the events where new students drive through in cars and we get to talk to them. And I got chatting with Chris and he described what he was doing with all modes and it was the first time that I had any optimism that maybe this could really work. And he described a situation with multiple cameras, et cetera, where he truly had students who were in the classroom and others who were connecting remotely, and yet they all seemed to be blended together somehow. So I asked if he would, would talk to the department, and then we let the word out um, to others, such as Marianne, okay, and we have um, people from, um, from across campus, as you can see, um, who are joining us and we're recording this so still others can benefit from this. So again, thank you very much, Chris. And I'll just um, turn it over to you now, if you can kind of talk about what you do and maybe kind of show us a little of this in action. Sure. So let me give you about five minutes worth of background. If you remember back last March, the university gave us or required us to go online before spring break because we thought we would be online for a couple of weeks and they were kind of forcing us to, to get used to this concept. I tried to do all modes with no students in the classroom. And so um, I wasn't this room, it was one downstairs. I came here and I had the camera all set up and I started teaching, but I was kind of, I wanted to really teach the way I normally teach, which, which was walk around the classroom, call on students, so on. Every time I would leave the podium, of course, to kind of do what I wanted to do to demonstrate something, I couldn't see the students. Every time I was behind the podium, especially if I had it zoomed up, the way that my room downstairs is, is um, set up, and I would be looking at the, at the monitor, I really wasn't looking at the students because they would see the top of my head as I was trying to look at them. And so to answer their question or talk to them, I had to like gaze out into the back of the room into a blank wall. And it really, really, really was foreign to teach that way. Now, fortunately for the spring semester of 2020, it only lasted two days. And then we were online for the rest of the semester. So this semester, when I had the opportunity to teach all modes, I called ATS and asked them to come over to this room and to kind of strategize out with me how I can teach in what I was referring to as like classroom in the round, um, kind of a theater term where the theater is happening in the middle and then everybody is surrounded. And so that's what I tried to create in this classroom. Uh, so the first thing that ATS came through with for me, which was the most important thing, and you'll hear some of the comments from the students that I had in the room, is I had a detent board in the back of the room. And so if you look at the, the camera angle that's labeled classroom, you can see it um, lit up the underneath the clock. And so what that does is it allows me to teach and to look out into my class to call on Matt in the back, but then to also call on Rick, who's on the, um, the detent board, without any, have any use to having to go over to the computer or do anything of that nature. It's as if they're here in the room. Then in the front of the room, in this particular class, I don't use a PowerPoint. And so I have all of the, the 
the Zoom students projected in the front of the room so that my classroom students could see them at all times. And then you'll see that other angle in the corner, that's my iPhone. And so I put that on the Wi-Fi and I have the Zoom on the iPhone so that the students that are in the classroom, well, the students that are on Zoom could see an angle of the students that are in the classroom. This has been working fairly well because it allows me to just teach and to involve the students from Zoom, the students that are here, um, and it's really kind of seamless in many respects. Um, the students that are on Zoom fully participate. Uh, my other class that I teach, they banter back and forth. Um, the other class, I have more students on Zoom than I have in the classroom. So I actually have them activate their microphones so that there's not that dead air space and that they can immediately talk. That has worked fairly well. But I cannot imagine doing this without having the opportunity to have this direct line of sight at all times. Uh, because trying to do it from that podium is really quite foreign. I could show you a few things. We can talk to talk also about some of the challenges in the current infrastructure. But I thought I would introduce you to my students and they can tell you their perspective from the student side of things as well. And then that way you can start planning. Uh, your own futures, I suppose. Uh, Maggie, what are your thoughts? Oh, um, I think this works really well. I've gone between being on Zoom and being in person probably more than the other in-person students have. And it works very well. Um, my only, the only drawback, I think, is that it's pretty difficult to understand the students that are in the classroom. I can understand Judd pretty well, um, and I can understand the students that are like right underneath the microphone. But other than that, I can't really hear the other students, which makes Judge have to like repeat everything that they say. Um, and yeah, so like with the masks, it's hard to understand people and students just mumble generally. So that's kind of hard. And I'm like definitely projecting and enunciating a lot right now, uh, which is, you know, I have to remember to do that. I'm like just speaking naturally. So I think that's one of the only drawbacks to this setup. Yeah, so I will tell you that um, I teach Socratically in both of my classes. And so the classroom participation is constant. And I'm always calling on different people throughout the room. That's been the hardest, the hardest thing. Um, and for me personally to have to remember to repeat or at least summarize what was just said, because I don't 100% know whether the Zoom students could hear, that's been difficult. In this particular room, I don't know if you can kind of see, but there is a microphone hanging from there and a microphone hanging right here but there aren't microphones in the far corners of the room in the way that this is set up. I think that these microphones were probably installed when the room was facing a different orientation because this room used to face forward towards Steitler uh, and now it's facing wide. And I don't think that they're the same setup that maybe it was a few years ago whenever all the equipment was originally installed. So if I can ask Tori a, a, a second, Tori, is it possible to have more mics installed in the room so that there are mics in every corner? Um, probably. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I know um, Matt and Tim are, they are a classroom technology. Um, so I would say if there's a request and a need, most likely, I would say just put it put it out to them. You, you can just go through a help desk, but but Matt and, and Tim in um, ITSS would be able to be the best answer. And when I first mapped this out, it didn't seem like the microphones were going to be a problem uh, because we came here and I would talk and I would, but I guess I'm just louder or used to projecting in a classroom and the students are not. And so that's been the most difficult. Matt, comments, thoughts? Matt also goes between Zoom and and uh, in-person, more in-person than Zoom, but. Yeah, so I would say the setup right now is probably 
the best possible form. And it honestly feels like a regular class. And since that we can see the students in the front and judge can see the students in the back, it feels as if they're here already. Um, and definitely what Maggie was saying, going, going between Zoom and in-person, um, the only difficulty is sometimes hearing students and judge has to remind them to speak up loudly. But other than that, I don't see a problem in the setup or how we do it. Your um, thoughts, comments? Hi, I really like it as well. I think, oh, Marianne has a question. Oh yeah, sure. Um, hi, everybody. Um, Judge, thanks for doing this. My question is, are you wearing a special mic or you're just talking normally with a little bit more power and enunciation in the classroom? Yeah, I'm just talking normally. And so, I, you know, I'm also taller, so I'm close to those microphones. Um, and where I kind of stand, I'm kind of in between both of them anyway. And so that may also may also pick me up better. But it also picks up Matt, who from a, on the other side of the room, who has a deeper voice. And so, if you have a bit of a deeper voice for whatever reason, the microphones pick you up. If you're if you have a, a very light voice, then that's where you start to die off. I have a question. Oh. Sure, go ahead, Jessica. Um, have you tried using live transcript at all to try to pick up some of those things that is hard to hear? I have not, no. Uh, I mean, certainly it would be easy to do. I've done it at my court before because I use Zoom there too. Uh, a live transcript or almost a live closed caption? The so. live transcript. So um, starting in February, um, Zoom enabled live transcript for all .edu domain users. So it's now enabled for all Arcadia users. It's using automatic speech recognition to produce text not that accurate, but it's better than nothing. Um, so I've had some mixed reactions to it. So I was just curious. Yeah, I haven't used it. Like I said, I've used it at court um, almost to, uh, to collect something as a transcript. My thought though would be that if you can't hear Zoom on the other side, I'm not sure Zoom is going to hear you to, to, trans, to transcribe it, but maybe. I certainly could try it in one of our classes just to see and to see what the result would be. Rick, could you? Yeah, I, I noticed I've got my uh, Zoom set on speaker view. So when somebody talks, I see them. The problem is when the young man in the back of the room talked, he was just off screen. I couldn't see him. Right, so I know what the difficulty there is, and that's the limited aspect of the technology. So I have three independent, uh, essentially, logins to Zoom. The D10 board is one, the school's camera in the room is one, and the um, iPhone in the back is one. If you're solely on speaker view, it's picking up the microphones, and the microphones are hooked with the school's camera in the back of the room. And so the angle of that, that camera will never pick up Mac the way that this, this classroom is laid out. And so the idea was is to keep students on gallery view so they can at least see through, um, through that over there. I know that the provost had recommended possibly bringing in laptops and having every student do their laptop. Um, but there are several problems with that. First of all, the students get knocked off of the Wi-Fi here all the time. I don't know if it's this building or what, but in this building in particular, it's terrible. And then the second thing was, is the in-person students really didn't want to do it. You can get it. When you have your laptop in front of you, A, it serves as a very big distraction, and B, you're tied to your screen. So it's kind of difficult to be looking around at your peers around you when you also have to be looking at your screen to see everybody else on it, as well as the issue is, who's gonna have their laptop on with their sound, it can cause some very bad feedback. I feel so, as the D10s are way better. Because I gave the option early on that you can bring in the laptop if you wanted, uh, but that was kind of frowned upon. I actually brought students in before the semester started, several of them to kind of test some things um, to see you know, how it would work. <clears throat> So right now, uh, you've got on the front screen in front of the classroom, the pictures of all of us on Zoom. 
you have the same pictures in the back of the room on the D10, is that correct? Yeah, so I'm facing the D10 board, so I can see all of you on Zoom. The students are facing the screen, which is the projector is, you know, being projected from the computer in the room. Um, and so, yes, that's correct. So as I'm walking around, the students are all looking at me, but all of you are looking at me too. So it's as if you're just sitting in the back of my room and I can call on you and, and so on. And now, sometimes the students then turn around and talk to the D10 board um, as well. Now we, we do a lot of screen sharing. I know in my case, I, I write out, you know, in real time stuff on my tablet, which I then, you know, share the screen. If you do that, then I guess on both the front and the back of the room, you see the shared screen in a few of the students' pictures, right? Is that? No, actually not. Um, so that was just updated. I can show you. So I'll just share my internet screen here. Um, certainly in the front of the room, they can see a few, but I can then in the, on the D10 board, and I'll show you with my phone. I had called ATS over and explained to them what I wanted to do. And they reached out to Zoom and Zoom and D10 actually changed the changed the layout Bring it closer. So you can see that it'll now allow, it used to do exactly what you were saying. It would force me to see what was on the screen share in the back of the room, which defeated the whole purpose of what I was trying to do. Yeah. But um, what it does now is it just creates one box is the screen share and then it has all of the other people there. Whereas the students in the front could still see the screen share. And so the Zoom students can see the screen share. I can see the students and the Zoom students, of course, can see the screen share because it's, it's shared with them. That's great. That's why I had not moved my one class to all modes because I teach using a hypothetical method and I put the hypotheticals up on the screen to then discuss them. Uh, but I wasn't able to do that and then be able to see the students. So, I didn't want to move that class to all modes immediately. When this got updated, and then we got the internet back on campus, I moved that class to all modes to kind of experiment with it, and it's worked fairly well. So do you have to tell Zoom that you want that view on the D10, or is that the default view for the D10 when on Zoom screen sharing? No, uh, when you screen share, the default view will be the screen share. And then, like, if you noticed, I walked towards you all at one point, I just switched it to gallery view, and then it made everybody come back. So you do have to manually do that, but it only takes like a second. Oh, so Chris, I have a follow up question on that. So you said that you can also see the gallery view of all students. And um, there, there was a D10 board. Um, so that's mobile, right? You can you can or you you need to like walk close to that board to see that? Uh, no, it's like, I, I don't, Tori, I don't even know how big this is. What is it, like 55 inches? Uh, it's like a 55 inch TV. So yeah. I can see it from anywhere in the back of the room. And now I guess if you had a hundred students on it or over whatever the limit is on Zoom, then, you know, of course, then you have multiple screens, but for the size classes that I teach in Brubaker, they're never gonna be larger than what could fit on this screen, especially when about 50% of the students at least are in person. Okay, so even if you sit, you, you, you stand right next to the podium, you can still clearly see all students from the gallery view. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I could be lecturing from here and looking out this way, and I would be able to see clearly all of the, the D10 board students. Thank you, thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, now the D10 board, like I can't emphasize enough. And if this gets taken away from me next semester, I'm gonna be really upset. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important this D10 board has been for my teaching. You know, whether others teach in a different manner, maybe it's not as necessary, but for my teaching um, with being able to call on the students and look at them and involve a discussion, it's been, it's been almost required. 
Because like I said, otherwise you have to be staring at a camera in the back for it to make it look like you're looking at them. And it's a much more artificial way, almost like you're a TV anchor um, to do it. And then you're trying to talk to these students, but you're ignoring the ones on Zoom because you can't see them. It just becomes more problematic. So Chris, is that a smart board in the, in the front of the classroom? Um, so you're talking about the D10 board? Well, I, I know that, that we have smart boards installed oh, in some classrooms, no, and I just want to know the difference. No, this, it's not. It's not a smart board. Um, one, of the, one of the hardest things that I had is writing on the board. Um, I will tell you that, you know, initially I thought what I could do is just zoom up on the board, but that didn't work. And then I tried to use, like, big sticky notes. That didn't work. In addition to that, in this particular room, this camera, this uh, screen won't come up. Um, I can't control it from the podium. It controls a different screen in the room because again, I think the orientation of this room was changed. And so then that prohibits me even further from doing anything there. What I will show you though, is that the D10 board does have a whiteboard. And so occasionally if there's something I want everyone to see, very clearly, I'll use the D10 board's whiteboard. And so, this allows everyone to see what I'm writing. And so that's clearly on the screen in the front of the room and it is you know, sent to all of the students, all of the students on Zoom. Chris, if you share your screen like you did before this, can't you write it on that and everybody see it? Or no, you have to only write on the D10 board. No, no, no. I can write it on that too. But the only thing with regard to that is I have to type it on that. I can't handwrite it on that. And some things I like to draw out. Um, so there's certain legal principles that just make more sense if they're drawn out and connected by maybe a flow chart or something of that nature. And so I could try to do that on the fly using the whiteboard, but I can't, I can't draw it out. I've used, um, not in this class, but I've used it in my other class, an iPad, a mini, that the university let me borrow to project that screen on there. That's worked um, as well. So I wanted, um, so hi everybody, I'm just gonna pop in here. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Tim Miloff, I'm the director of IT support services, um, formerly ATS director, kind of we've changed a few things, um, kind of helped out Chris get this set up in, in that space for him. Um, Matt, uh, who is not here today, unfortunately, um, he's out today, but uh, him and I have been going through a bunch of different uh, scenarios of how the fall is gonna look in a lot of these classrooms. And one of the things that we're work, definitely working on is providing confident style monitors in the back of all of the classrooms, current, kind of like you see with what Chris is doing, with the D10 board, um, the D10 boards are, are, are more Zoom oriented in terms of the, the hardware that they are. Um, so what we're looking at doing is, is running the Zoom off of the podium machine and having the podium machine also connected to the back of the room um, so that that, those, that gallery view would be all there. So you wouldn't need to join from two different, two different locations, right? You wouldn't need to use the D10 board to join in. Uh, and all of the classrooms do have cameras and microphones in there. So we will be able to continue to utilize um, that as well. Um, and we do have those iPads, with, uh, iPad minis with, with Apple pencils that you can use to join the Zoom and, and do annotations from uh, as kind of like that whiteboard thing. So we do have those that can be uh, signed out and checked out for, for semester use uh, as well. So we are definitely looking at all of those possibilities or well, not possibilities, but we're gonna, we wanna be putting those into those confidence style monitors into every traditional classroom that we can on campus. So I think so that's yeah. The only thing I bring up to you just to keep in mind, especially if you're going to use the screen share function as a PowerPoint, um, would be that if it's all running off of the, the podium's computer, that will eliminate the gallery view because it, the it, only way to keep the- It won't actually, it, 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 Chris, it won't. If you, you have to, uh, as long as your Zoom is set up to use dual monitors, which uh, we would make sure we would build into the, the, the um, the, the image of, of, of Zoom when it when it logs on, when you log into that computer, you would have dual monitors and the, the, the monitor that's at the podium itself 
would be uh, duplicated with what is up at the uh, the front of the room, and then we would extend to the back of the room as a, a, a confidence monitor, so you could see that. So if you're not teaching with Zoom and you wanted to have like your you wanted to see what your the class was seeing, you could you know project your your presentation, and it would be on the front and the back of the room, so you could be standing one way or the other. Uh, yes, confidence monitor. So you, it, it, it it's it's a a monitor that like, you know, if I'm if I'm presenting and I see in the back of the room, like, you know, people often will, will be presenting or reading from a, a, a teleprompter or something like that, kind of think of it like that. It's like a, a teleprompter in the back of the room, but we could set it up as as uh, Zoom capable with gallery view if you're doing that, or like presentation view for a presenter. So if you want to see your your presentation in the background or something like that, you can see that as well. So that's great. We'll, we'll have lots of training on those come come August when we have all, hopefully all that installed over the summer. Yeah, that's great. Because that was, like I said to everyone earlier, that was the biggest issue that I was dreading when we came back all those, uh, was not being able to see. And yeah, no, we, 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 we noticed, we know how well that worked for you. So we were trying to figure out ways um, to, to, to do this um, so we can get them in every room. Um, the, the D10 boards require a lot more um, a lot more uh, work to, to do a few things than we when we were hoping to do with the with these uh, additional monitors that we would install in the back of the rooms. Sure. There's loads of questions. Oh, loads of questions. So <laughs> I can't see the, the questions on the D10 board. You're just there's telling just me that like they are. You see there's like a little. Thing. Oh, there is. Yeah. OK, I see it. Uh, Vitaly. Oh, yeah. I just had a note about uh, a previous Rick's comment 10 minutes ago. Uh, you can actually pin any view you want. So you have three different views here from uh, the auditorium. You can right click on any of our icons that do include that view and just click on a pin that will literally pin it to your view. You can remove pin if you want to switch to something else or replace the pin if you right click on another uh, icon. So that's one way to uh, have multiple cameras or views or shared screens, controlling it from your machine. That's what that's all I did today. Um, Chris, when you were first, thank you, first of all. Um, when you were first talking, I think you said you were logged into Zoom three different times. Is that, can yes. you, it sounds okay. like you're saying with this, this new setup that they're wondering about that would not yeah, so the idea the idea would be that you would have to log in one time from the podium and you would be able to have everything there instead of having to log in from the D10 board in the back as well. Unless you wanted to use like the, the remote whiteboard feature, then you would need to log in from the iPad that, like I said, we, we do have those that can be checked out. We have a, a decent amount of those for faculty that would like to util, utilize those. Um, there are iPad minis that are compatible with Apple Pencil, so you can hand draw notes, you can hand write notes. Um, I know a lot of faculty used to do kind of similar things with tablets and, and I've, I've done a lot with them before and I, you know, I want to continue to see that kind of grow and I think this is an, a great opportunity for us to, to kind of move forward with that. So um, the, the goal, like I said, is to have this basically be in every standard kind of classroom. So lab classrooms are harder because there's, there's not wall space or there's not things like that. Uh, and so we're working on other things for that. Um, and then uh, classrooms will be a little bit easier um, to, to do because there's, you know, maybe a flat wall in the back that there might be, you know, just a, a plain wall that we can, we can put those uh, monitors against. Um, and then also, if we wanted to have, if, if some rooms, the camera positioning is not ideal, we're looking at either removing some of the cameras this summer or also just providing an additional webcam um, that will be attached to the podium that could be looked out from the front. So if, if you're, if you, if you're, if you want your students to see the other students in the classroom instead of like the backs of their heads and they want to see everyone in the front, you'll be able to switch back and forth. It's as simple as just switching the cameras um, from your from your video piece. So if you have multiple webcams, um, like you know, like if you have an external webcam and, a, and a, a like a laptop, like you have an integrated webcam and like an external webcam. So like I have two webcams, so now I'm coming from a different webcam over here. So like you can just flip back and forth. It's it's a pretty easy thing to do um, in Zoom. To, to flip your your uh, your camera view back and forth, so we would have an additional webcam kind of attached to the podium that way. So, um, we're the the yeah. I'm sorry, I'm reading chat too. The the wi the mini the the yes, we're working on the Wi-Fi right now. That is that is a, a continued challenge of things that have been happening. I I do anticipate that 
not being an issue come the fall, right? We'll have the entirety of the rest of the spring as well as the summer to address any of those networking concerns that have been happening on, um, that have been ongoing. Uh, things have been getting better on a, on a daily basis on campus. I know there's still some some issues that we're, we're, we're focused on and, you know, we do apologize for that, but there is there is there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, it's down the road, but it's definitely light. So, um, what if we are using instead of um, tablets like uh, Surface tablets? You can do the same thing. It's the same as functionality. Yep. Yep. As long as you join, you can and your your pen from your Surface can 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 draw on it. You just share the whiteboard from your your tablet or whatever you have. So you can share, um, even if you have a touchscreen computer, it doesn't even necessarily need to be a, a tablet. If, you're, if, you're, if your laptop has a touchscreen and you want to join, you can, and you can touch your finger with it, just share the whiteboard from there and you can draw right on it. And then, I'm sorry, I have one question for Chris. So you're using the phone to have this other view. Um, and, right. I, and that's which one? Is that the classroom? Like yeah, that's the classroom. Okay, and do the students find that very helpful? I mean, is that for the students or is that for? The, really for the students on Zoom so that they can see the class face forward. Uh, you know, it, because of the angle of this room, it does look a little big, uh, but it was the best that I could do to give a facing forward viewpoint of the students constantly. Um, whether they use it all the time on Zoom, I don't know. Um, I thought it was helpful for like, because Judd does try to go between like interacting with the Zoom students and the in-person students, like if somebody doesn't know the answer to a question, he asks us to call on somebody in the classroom. So it makes it easier for me to see who's actually there for me to call on uh, if I can look at this view here. Also, I would say that for the people on Zoom, since we don't have our computers right in front of us, it's difficult to see who's talking or hear who's talking. So even though this doesn't really fix the issue, you can gain from where a judge is looking at the classroom and who's talking and trying to get a perception of the setup of the classroom. That was kind of my fix to not having the computers all on their desks. Because again, the students didn't really want to do that. In addition to that, before maybe the pinning technology advanced, it would have been difficult for me in the back of the room to have all 25 of them on the screen because then I wouldn't be able to differentiate which ones were actually in present and which ones were on Zoom that I needed to pay attention to. And so, um, you know, that, that's another reason I did this. So when I see the people on Zoom, I know exactly who they are and I can pay attention to them as much as I can pay attention to the in-person students. Chris, I have two questions. Um, one, uh, in my classes, we like to uh, have a side chat going. Um, and I like to monitor the chat. And I like to sometimes call in what's on the chat. But I know that my students like to chat with each other while class is going on. How easy or hard is it for you to manage or, the, manage or read the chat in this configuration? So I will tell you that I'm not a person who typically reads the chat. Even when I'm sitting in the computer and lecturing or talking, I, I don't necessarily pay attention to the chat. So take that with some, you know, take that. Uh, however, it would be easy from the podium, or if I really wanted to do it, probably what I would do would log in with my iPad and allow me to look at the chat while I was walking around. Okay. Um, that's probably what I would do to make it easier. But again, I, in both of my classes, I just don't pay attention to it. Um, I know they use it sometimes because I can see it pop up, um, but I just don't pay attention to it. So they don't ever put stuff in there directed to me because they know I don't. They know I don't. Got, it. Got I, it. I was just gonna say, in addition, on the D10 board, we can't see uh, when comments are coming up, but since we're all looking forward, when something comes up in the chat, it'll say a portion of the message and who said it. So the students have all, we've been really good about saying, oh, someone's raising their hand or, oh, there's a comment in the chat. So it's more responsibility up to the students if he doesn't have or if you don't have a device to monitor the chat. 
cool. Yeah. yeah. And I suspect if you're if more of you are in person, there's less of a need for the chat also. Yeah. My second question is for the students. Um, and somebody, it might even be somebody on this chat with me said to me that students, students are reporting that when you're in a hybrid classroom like this, you feel not like you're being taught, but that you're watching people being taught. Can you, can the students comment on that? How do you feel? I have two that do switch between the two. Do you understand what she's asking? Like, do you feel uh, like, do you feel like you're just watching something? me teach this classroom when you're on Zoom? Or do you feel like you're integrated into the classroom? Definitely integrated in the classroom. I don't think, I think Judge does a really good job at including the people on Zoom within the kids in the class as well. So I never feel like I'm just sitting there spectating what he's teaching. Magazine. Yeah, I feel the same way. I think Judge does a really good job of going between like the students that are in person and the students that are on Zoom when he's like asking a question or like wants to talk about a case. And I've also found that like it's not like with the students that are on Zoom all the time, it also doesn't feel like we never hear from them or anything like that. Like Judge will make a joke to one of the students on Zoom and like it's so he's not just like, you know, if we're having, if he's like making a joke about something, it's not just to the students that are in person. He will also like include the students on Zoom in that. So it feels more like a regular classroom than just like the students on Zoom are watching a webinar or something. One of the um, CTLM um, workshops that I went to, it was about all modes and it was right before we started or it was in December, I can't remember. But I remember bringing up this topic and saying, I'm like concerned about this. And one of our colleagues took a master's degree program and where he was online, but he was uh, in an in-person classroom observing. And he said that the faculty member made sure to go back and forth and deliberately made sure to call on the people on Zoom. And so when he said that, that's what I've done. I mean, I, I just deliberately try to, every two or three times, make sure I go out to Zoom. Like I said, like Maggie said, you know, if I make a joke, sometimes I'll make the joke with an in-person student or sometimes I'll make the joke with someone online. And so I'm very, very deliberate in involving those students on Zoom. And, and Chris, just how big uh, on average a class are we talking about that you're doing this with? Uh, well, so my classes would never be above 24. Okay. 28 at the most if we, you know, our enrollments were to increase, but the classrooms themselves don't fit more than that. So I would never have a class bigger than that. This semester we have 13 on Zoom, uh, 13 in person and four on Zoom. My other class I have eight in person and 13 on Zoom. Ellen? Chris, this is so impressive. Um, Ellen, um, from your um, role as the head of the CTLM, are, is Chris kind of the best example on campus? Are there other people who have also managed to do this? Well, it's funny you should mention that. Um, <laughs> um, I know in um, Jody's PLC, there was discussion a few months ago about like, how can we actually see the what's happening in classrooms where this has been successful? And um, Chris's example came up as a really power potent one, um, but we're about to do some outreach um, and have a, a time slot on May 19th um, that uh, you'll be hearing more about, but basically in response to this PLC that was like, please let us hear from people who've been doing this about the, the real, like the nitty gritty about how people did it. Like I'm thinking of what Chris just said, like that practice of calling, like calling on students who are on Zoom, <laughs> right? And intentionally making jokes with them is, is like maybe as important as the technology, right? That, and so people wanting to be able to hear that. So we do know that we have some colleagues in London who've had some good success um, with, a, with having some students online and not. 
Um, but we're about to do a call uh, for, for folks on campus who feel like they have had success. And my guess is that ATS may be super helpful in identifying some folks. And we're hoping Chris might be willing to be a part of that day as well. Um, so that'll be May 19th um, from 10 to one. We're doing a, a sort of summit on like successes around teaching online and in-person students at the same time. So, um, so I don't have a handle on everyone who's been feeling like they've had good success, but we hope to have a much better handle on it. And for those folks to be able to share as Chris has today, um, what some of the key elements are like technologically for sure, but also just in terms of being able to create a space where all students feel like they're really able to be a part of what's going on. That's great. Thank you, Ellen. And Tim, um, it, it sounds like the university has committed itself to providing this equipment wherever feasible, even though it could be kind of pricey. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, just put it together, the proposal. Uh, Rashmi and I are working on getting everything pushed in so I can get this uh, in and, and, and started to be installed for this uh, before the summer starts. That's great. I mean, obviously it's, it's pricey, but this is of the highest priority if we're going to be able to pull this off. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely something that we were looking at to make sure that um, that, that, that classrooms were in that all modes ready mentality so that, that people could teach remotely and in person and, and, and have students be, do the same. So a couple of, um, a couple of things that popped up probably more apparent this semester because of the network issue than anything else. But when the network went down and I have all of these students who were on campus, they had real problems getting on to Zoom. So I really couldn't move my class back to a traditional Zoom all modes. Um, I had to do something different. And so what I did, particularly for that class, was I used an iPad and essentially put the iPad on a table in front of me, which just captured me, but I, te I taught this, still this hybrid way. Um, the students could hear everything, they could see me, but they certainly couldn't see the students at that point. Um, that worked and was a bit of a stopgap, but we may need to, and Ellen, I don't know if this is for the center or not, but. We may, be, we may need to think about best practices when things like that fail quickly. Um, I had a camera issue last week where the camera just was blue. Um, and the, for whatever reason with the camera, the microphones weren't working either. Uh, but it was my first day of all modes for my other class. And so I didn't want to send them home. Um, so we just used the D10 board and that worked just fine. But those sometimes hiccups do happen and it probably would be best to start thinking strategically how they're addressed quickly because if that camera is not working for my class that means it's not going to be working for the 10 20 class it's not going to be working and so how do we get those things resolved very quickly as as is possible um chris i don't know if you saw um probably not because you're you're not a chat person but one question i have i i tend to um, like to have students do some work in a, like, especially in a two hour or three hour class where they're working in small groups. And I'm just wondering if that's something that's a part of your pedagogy, how you've managed that in terms of the in-person and on Zoom student. Yeah, so I can tell you that it's not in the two classes that I'm teaching this semester. It is in my first group seminar, but that obviously was not all modes. Um, I had thought about it a bit, and my thought was is I would probably have the in-person students work together and put the Zoom students in a breakout room together. That was my initial thought. Um, this semester really just would not work because I had to have the students socially distant, and so I would have to have them all over the place. The problem, even if I had them bring in laptops, part of the problem well, they would have to bring in earphones and put themselves on mute, or you're going to have them echoing back and forth, I would imagine, with the varying different pieces of equipment. So that would certainly be harder. I'm going to need to think that through because I do do that in my first year seminar. Um, and what's the best option to do? I mean, maybe I would just have the students bring in computers that day and involve themselves with the people on Zoom because I would hate to have only two people or three people on Zoom 
and then never get to work with other students, that wouldn't be fair either. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't thought that through 100%. Um, do you mind if I ask Tim or Valerie if they have thoughts about that from a, a tech standpoint? Like if you wanted to be able to do small group work with some online and some face-to-face -face students, what, whether you have thoughts about how that might work? In, um, in, sorry, I think my internet's going in and out. Um, for getting getting people together to discuss this is that what you're referring to no i'm just saying in terms of like possible like from a technology standpoint um in terms of best practices what you would recommend if you were teaching a course this way in terms of if you wanted students to be able to work on projects during class time um what what you would recommend um there are a lot of a lot of options and opportunities. So I, I think a lot of it does come with um, the personal choice of what, what tools you're already using with your class and, and how. Um, I think it, ma it makes a lot of the, di the difference because we don't want to just throw tools at, you know, at, at faculty or students. Um, so I, I think like the Google suite, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in there to have something running. Like um, Marion was saying about a, like a back channel, you know, so there's could be a chat going, but there also could be a visual, you know, um, uh, Google doc so that it could be a running list that's, that's saved and added to, but there's just so many, so many options. I think it really just depends on what you're already comfortable with using. And students will be able to have their own Zooms too. So if they wanted to like run a Zoom in the corner, if they went for group work, they can create their own little Zoom room and, and you know, set up. You can, you can the, the, the faculty member can do breakout rooms so someone can, in the room can join and you'd be talking to someone outside of the classroom as well. So there's, there's lots of opportunity to, to kind of utilize the, the, uh, the technology that's there for, for them. That's super helpful. That's a great idea to think that the students could open their own Zoom room, right? <clears throat> One of the, okay. I just had one comment that we hadn't talked about earlier. I know Ellen and Chris uh, were talking about how it's important to engage with the students on the D10 board, whether that's making a joke or calling on them, but it is important. I, you guys can't tell, but you can. we can only see the people who have their cameras on, on the D10 board. So I don't know how that would impact if you do have a D10 board in your syllabus, if you require people to be on camera, because if there's a student that doesn't have their camera on, we can't see them. We can see them in the front on the Promethean board, but not in the back. So we couldn't engage with them in that same way. Just figured I'd mention that. Yeah, and so, I mean, I know this may not be the university's preference, but I do require everyone to have their cameras on. And so um, it's just because of the style that I use and, and they, with the exception of maybe one student last semester, I have never had anyone not do it if I've asked. So I don't punish them. You know, I don't take away points or something like that, but I do tell them it's my expectation and they all seem to, to do it. It works. So this concept of all modes will work. Um, like I can foresee this being a strength of the university in the future, but you just have to have the right technology and, and work out the bugs. And it sounds like the university is moving in that direction, but it's been a good experience for me. I will tell you that from a teaching standpoint, I think the students will attest to this. Teaching on Zoom, I was able to teach Socratically. I asked the questions, I would still call on them. Everything was the same in that regard. But the energy level that has resulted by being back in the classroom for both the students that are in the classroom, for those that are on Zoom and for myself has changed dramatically. Um, day one or two was like, do you just feel the difference? And you could feel the difference in the room. Uh, the students were more willing to banter back and forth. The online students were involved. It was just a totally different environment than sitting on the flat screen in front of a desk um, and teaching that way. 
And so it has changed my business law. I did a, a weekend review session for that class for their midterm. And the students, half of the students wanted to come in. And I was like, sure, if you want to come in, we can do it. I mean, I've already had this set up ready. And so they came in. As soon as they came in, the class had a personality. It was like night and day. Um, the two of the athletes were talking with two of the students online. It was just, it was amazing the dynamic shift as soon as there was a small component of in-person in -person gathering. And, so and by that, oh, Go sorry, ahead. and by, by that you mean a shift back to the before times. Absolutely, yeah. So it was much more traditional in that feeling that you would have with your class. But the good thing was is that feeling also then went to the people on Zoom. It wasn't just the people that were here in the classroom. The classroom people may have created it in the sense that we're all in this community together but it projected through the screen to the Zoom people too. They could actually feel the difference. I mean, you both are, you could feel the difference. And so that, that certainly has been a benefit to the all modes. Curious about admin exams with some in-person and some remote students. Oh, I've done that. So um, my business law, again, they, they weren't all modes, but when they came in for that review session, they then asked, whether or not they could take the exam on paper. And I was like, well, that's not what I intended. I had it you know, created on, on Canvas, but I said, sure. And so they came in and it was the same exact exam, but the, I administered their exam on paper. And then I used the lockdown browser with Zoom. And so I was able to see the, the Zoom students and I administered the Canvas exam in lockdown browser with Zoom. And then I just graded the two different exams. One was on Canvas, one was in paper. It made no difference to me in the grading process. But the students that took it in person said they much preferred to take it in person, um, that they liked handwriting out the exams as opposed to typing. And so it didn't matter to me, I let them do it. Now this class, well, the final exam, I don't know. I'll have to offer them if they would want to do that. I don't know. Their midterm was a take home, so it didn't matter. Jessica, you had put in the chat a question about administering the exams in person and in some remote. Did that just answer your question? Yes. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions at all for Chris or his students? I just want to say, Chris, you're making me feel, oh, dare I say, excited about the prospect of almost. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was my reaction, too, when Chris first told me. It, 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 I went from despairing to thinking maybe this actually has some possibilities. It feels so good to be on campus. I can't <laughs> tell you how good it feels to be on campus. Um, and I'm, for the most part, the only one in this building most of the day, with the exception of some of the PT people. Um, but it's just, it's, a, it's just a nicer, more traditional experience in that regard. Any closing comments from the students? Any more writers? D10 boards. <laughs> more microphones, too. It really does work with the right technology. Oh, Tim. Yeah, that was one of the things that I don't think you were a part of when you first came in. But the microphones in the room have been a problem. Um, so it, the microphones pick me up okay, fine. But they have a hard time picking up the students, depending upon where the students are in the room and how vocal they are. And, no matter how well you try, you can say, please scream at the wall, but it only works so far. So I have to mentally like repeat everything they say, which is fine, but um, be aware that the two microphones in the room may not be enough, uh, especially when you're using, like they are now with regards to the social distance room, the entire length of the room. Well, it's been a pleasure. Um, it's been exciting to teach. The students have enjoyed, I think, and yes. um, I think we, we definitely have the capability and the promise to be able to do this in the future. This, 
this works. It definitely works. Well, thank you so much, Chris. And as soon as I get the, the recording link that I will distribute it to everybody, and of course you can share it with any others as well. This has been so valuable. Thank you. So long. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. One of the things I was going to comment on, Ned, is, you know, it's being back in the classroom, it's so exciting, this prospect. For me, I wonder if it's going to just exacerbate things. So one of the main things I miss about being in the classroom is being able to give students a problem to work on and being able to walk around and peer over their shoulders and see how they're doing. And I can and I can do it without disturbing them or interrupting them. They can keep going and and so I'm just concerned that if I have half my students in the classroom, I'm going to do that. And then the Zoom students are going to feel even more neglected, you know, whereas now everyone's on Zoom. So it's a hard situation for everyone. Yeah. Um, so, so that's going to be one of my main struggles, I think, is, is the temptation to make things great for the in-students, in-person students, while realizing that's going to leave the Zoom students behind in many regards still. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think you're absolutely right. Let me uh, stop the recording, um, but these are all issues that I think would be wonderful to raise at the event that Ellen's pulling together. Yeah, yeah. I think it is, you know, it is something that is more math specific, though. You know, I, I don't know how much other people walk around the, and peer over their students' shoulders to see what they're doing. I mean, maybe for coding, you know, you're looking at their screen or something, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah good point that seems anyways no. the thing in the back of my mind is 